Next, we're going to take a look at positions where white has two pawns and black has only one pawn. Here, the one mistake people make is that a lot of times they try to uh, create a pass pawn pushing the c4, but if you do this, the game now ends in a draw. After black takes the pawn and you take back, black will simply just move back to c6, and if you're trying to go in front of the pawn reaching the critical squares, he will be able to take the opposition and then get a draw. So coming back from the beginning, white is winning this position. All he has to do is move to e4. He doesn't need to worry about black trying to get to the pawns as the pawns attack the squares c4 and d4 and black cannot get to the pawns. After this, black has two options, either retreat the king to c6 or trying to push the pawn. If he pushes the pawn to b4, well here we don't want to take. Taking, he's going to be able to take back and win the other pawn and get a draw, but we are going to push the pawn forward. So now, and now all black has is to retreat. Let's say he's going to retreat to c6, then we're going to slowly bring our king closer. Let's say king d4. If he's going to take the opposition on d6, we're simply just going to push the pawn and if he blocks us off, now we're going to be able to have access and take his other pawn. Let's say king to c7, we take the other pawn and then win the game from here. And if instead of pushing the pawn before, he's going to retreat the king to c6, we're simply going to bring our king to d4. And then let's say he takes the opposition. Now we could push the pawn on b4, regaining the opposition. He's going to move the king to c6. And now we're going to advance on the other side. And after this, let's say he moves king to c7, we're just going to come and go after the pawn. If he's trying to protect it, hold on to it, we're going to take the opposition. And then after he moves on a6, we take the opposition again, and now he cannot hold on to the pawn anymore. And after he moves away and we take the pawn, we win the game from here. This position is very similar to the other one. The only difference is that the king is not on c5 and it's on d5, and he has the opposition. Now, this complicates things a little bit because if you are trying the same thing, you cannot advance with the king. If you go to e3, he's simply going to just take the opposition. If you go to f3, again, he's going to take the opposition. And here you have to be careful. If you try to go around on g3, now he's going to be able to go towards the pawns and win those pawns. If you push the pawn to create a pass pawn, he will be able to take. And after you take, uh, he's going to be able to catch it. Therefore, coming back from the beginning, what you want to do here is push the pawn to b4, gaining the opposition. Now he's going to have to retreat. He could either move the king to c6 or the king to e5. If he moves the king back to c6, then we're going to advance on the other side on e4. You do have to be careful coming with the king to d4, he will be able to take the opposition and this game is drawn now. So you want to make sure that you're advancing on the other side. This is also called outflanking. And now let's say he brings the king to d6, we're going to take the opposition. After he moves to c6, we'll be able to again outflank him, advance on the other side. And if he moves the king to d7, we will be able to take the opposition and go and win the pawn and then win the game from here. Or if he's trying to hold on to the pawn, let's say he moves on b6, we will be able to take the opposition. And then after we take the opposition, again, he's not going to be able to hold on to the pawn and we will win the pawn and win the game. And after pushing the pawn, if instead of going to c6, he goes on e5, not letting us go towards his pawn, you can see his pawn covers the square c4 and his king covers the square d4. The way you win here is you're going to try to advance on the other side. I'll flank him again. So we will be able to push the pawn to c4. And now after he takes, we will be able to access the critical square and we will be able to win the game from here. If black has a knight pawn and it's on the original square, you do have to be a little bit more careful how you play this game. The process is the same. You want to push the pawn to b6, gaining the opposition again. And now, after he moves the king to d8, we could take the opposition again. After he moves to c8, he will be able to advance on e7. And after he moves the king to b8, you could come to d8. And now, when he moves the king on a8, you, you got to be careful. Coming with the king to c8 will be stalemate. But the way you can win this game now is simply pushing the pawn to c6. 
if he takes the pawn then you will be able to come with the king on c7 and after he moves the pawn again he will simply be able to check him and then get a queen and win the game if he doesn't take the pawn and he moves the king on c8 then you will be able to push the pawn with check and after he moves in the corner you got pawn to c8 mate and in the end i do want to mention that if we switch the previous position one file to the left and now black has a rook pawn now this game is actually drawn there's nothing that we can do here to win this game if we tried the same idea with pawn to a6 gaining the opposition black will simply run towards the corner and let's say we advance on d6 he's gonna go in the corner and after we move the king to c6 he's gonna go to b8 and there's nothing that we can do to get black out of that square so eventually we have to push the pawn but after he takes the pawn and we win the pawn back we know that this is a draw because now we have a rook pawn and all black has to do is stay in the corner and then we'll get a draw if you liked my video, please subscribe and don't forget to check out my new website, MasterYourChess.com, where you can learn, practice, test, and master your chess knowledge.